good morning, everyone. We're really delighted to have you with us today. A special welcome to everybody that's here for the baptism. It's always fun. You get babies and things like that going. It's great to have everybody here. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, this is a constitutionally required announcement for members of the congregation. There is a annual congregational meeting immediately following this worship service. So uh, if you're not a member, you don't have to stay. We'll have the thing as soon as it seems good after the service. So uh, we also want to invite everybody to come next week. We have a uh, piano, harpsichord, and organ concert right here. Dr. Horton, who's the uh, director of music ministry at Trinity Lutheran in downtown Lancaster. And that's uh, free and open to the public. It would be a great way to kind of start rolling toward Advent. So please join us for that. There are other announcements in the bulletin for you to peruse, and we hope that you'll put things on your calendar and come out and join us. But uh, without any further ado, welcome. I invite you to stand and join with me in the brief order of confession and forgiveness as it's printed in the bulletin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Give us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Amos. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested on a hand against the wall. It was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me, O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who see my life be put to shame and confound me. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune fall back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad of you. Let those who love your salvation. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Our second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even though through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you the word of the Lord, that we are who are, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself will with cry of commands, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thank you, be to God. Hallelujah. Keep away and be ready, for you do not know the word is coming. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 25th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus tells a parable about his own second coming, emphasizing the need for readiness at all times. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look! Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, in November, moving to the end of the Christian church year, which always begins sometime at the very end of November, beginning of December, with the first Sunday in Advent. So at the latter part of the church year, we kind of do the opposite of Stephen Covey's uh, famous dictum, begin with the end in mind, we're going to end with the end in mind. And these parables this week, next week, the week after, are all about the end of time and what to expect. Now, in our lives, we try really hard to ignore death. We pretend like it doesn't happen. Uh, we make up these silly things like if you watch some sitcoms or uh, uh, comedies and movies and so forth, uh, thinking of uh, a wedding or a funeral and four weddings or whatever that was, uh, some actor standing there trying to comfort his friends over the loss of one of their loved ones, and he's just making up this wishful thinking that doesn't console anybody. I did a wedding one time, uh, and they had a poem written in the bulletin about, don't grieve for me, I'm just kind of like in the next room, and it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. It matters deeply to us. And we all want to know what's going to happen, and on what authority, and is there any hope. So in today's lessons, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians specifically addresses that issue. What happens when you die? Now, Paul had created the, you know, he'd done the ministry that created this church, and he knew the people, and they were writing him, and he said, yeah, I'll be glad to go back over what we talked about when I was there. And he reminds them that uh, the Lord's coming. As Christians, one of the things that is fundamental to us is on Easter Sunday morning, Jesus bodily rose from the dead. And he then extends that gift to us. So we have this promise from the one who is trustworthy and true that what's going to happen to us after we die is there is a day coming, the day of the Lord from the Amos text, when the dead will be raised and us along with them. So the concern of the Thessalonians about, well, my loved ones that have passed away and the Lord hasn't come back yet, have they missed out? The answer is no, they haven't missed out because they will be bodily raised from the dead and those of us that are alive when the Lord comes will be here. We won't miss a thing. There is a judgment that comes as well. When the Lord comes back, he is going to be stopping history. And he is going to complete the process of restoring everything in the cosmos that's fallen. And human beings, as part of that process, each of us will have an opportunity to stand in front of Jesus and answer the question. I think he's going to say something to the effect of, so, what did you do with the gift of life that I entrusted to your care, to your stewardship? 
And there's going to be a conversation about everything we ever did or failed to do, every word we ever said or failed to say. That's kind of scary. A couple of things to put it in perspective. First of all, the Lord is trustworthy. God is a loving Father who sent Jesus into the world to redeem us, to save us, to, like the good shepherd in his parable, to go out and find the lost one and bring the lost home. That's who we're dealing with. That's a great comfort to us. Second thing is the Lord is slow to anger, quick to forgive. We have the examples all over the scriptures about that. Uh, probably the most potent one is in Exodus, the story of God leading the children of Israel out of bondage to freedom in the promised land. There's a confrontation between Moses, the prophet, and Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Moses gives nine prophecies to Pharaoh to try to get him to change his mind and let the people of Israel go and worship God. And instead of repenting, which is change your mind and go in a new way, Pharaoh, quote, hardened his heart. He doubled down in his obstinance. And after nine attempts to get him to change, finally the dreaded plague, the angel of death passing over the land of Egypt, happened. God does not want to judge. He's slow to anger, gives plenty of opportunity, and literally says through his prophets, come sit down and reason with me. Now, this parable about the, the bridesmaids puts this in a certain perspective. God has called us to live our lives in relationship with him. And the definition of wise and foolish is living with an eye toward what matters most in life and putting due diligence into that. So these girls, it says virgins in the text, but they were bridesmaids, were invited to be in the wedding party and they had a function to perform. And that function was they were part of the delegation that was going to be waiting to greet the bridegroom when the bridegroom came, and they're supposed to meet him and then in procession take him to the place where the bride is so that the wedding can take place. That's the key event, the bride and the groom coming together for the wedding. And they'll say it again, they're in the wedding party because they have a function. And that function requires them, it says lamps, but that word can either be like a flashlight or a candle or a torch um, for an after sunrise or after sunset procession. And the way those torches worked in those days was you had a nice healthy stick and rags were tied onto the end of it and it was soaked in petroleum or some flammable material and right before you used it, you would douse it with more oil, set it on fire, and then hold it up and out from you so that the light was cast around. So all 10 of the girls managed to come with torches, but only five of them thought, if he's delayed, I better have a reserve of oil. So they're very conscientious about doing what they were asked to do. So the bridegroom's delay. That's a theme in scripture. We wonder, when is the Lord coming back? When is the bridegroom going to arrive? And so in typical fashion, late into the night, the bridegroom finally arrives. And the girls that brought the extra oil were able to douse their torches, light them, hold them up, and they could lead the bridegroom to the bride and there could be a wedding. The ones that were too caught up in today to worry about what happens to 
tonight or tomorrow morning were not prepared. So the natural question, hey, give me some of your oil. And they're told, if we do that, all ten of the lamps are going to go out before we get the bridegroom to the bride. There won't be a wedding, so no. The purpose of why we're here is more important. And so they're left. Jesus warns at the end to watch. Watching is, I have a brother-in-law in the Navy. If you're watching Steve High, sailors get put on watch. They're stationed around the ship in various and sundry places, and their job is to stay awake, keep their eyes peeled on their sector, look for planes and boats and submarines and icebergs and all that kind of stuff. They're part of keeping the whole ship safe. And they take watch very seriously. We did the same thing in the Army, only we called it being on guard. And it was nothing to walk the perimeter in the early hours of the morning and find some soldier that's supposed to be on guard and they're asleep and you kind of wake them up and the first thing they say is, I wasn't sleeping when they were snoring. Um, I woke one guy up one morning and he said, Amen, Lord. And it was like, pretending like you had your head down, your eyes closed because you're praying. I knew you were asleep. But we're warned by Jesus to be prepared. What's that look like? Well, in Matthew 7, the Sermon on the Mount ends with the story of a wise person and a foolish person. What's the difference between the two? The foolish person builds their house on the sand, so when the storms of life come, it collapses. The wise person digs down and builds their house on the bedrock of the Word of God and lives their lives accordingly so that when the storm hits, their house stands. That's the admonition here, to be in the relationship with God, to live your life with that as the priority. Well, how do you do that? Well, I think it begins with baptism. Baptism is an acting out of the reality that God reaches into our lives when there's nothing we can do about it. You watch when we are baptizing the baby. One, probably not going to like it. Probably isn't going to trust me at all. But the proclamation is still going to be the same. That our Father in Heaven loves us so much. Cross, bearing our sins, dying for us, rising for us, and giving us His Holy Spirit, giving us a new life, giving us a future, giving us a place at the head table in the wedding reception that is the Kingdom of Heaven that's coming. That is a word spoken by God to us of unconditional love and favor. And our lives are utterly built on the trustworthiness of the person who makes that promise to us. Here's it in a nutshell. There's nothing you can do, but there's plenty that God can do. Your life depends on the faithfulness of Jesus of Nazareth. It starts in baptism. And then we live it. We live it in trusting Him. We live it in the hope that He's presented to us. That everything that's broken will be fixed. Everything that's lost will be found. And here's the the kicker for me, every tear will be wiped away by Jesus. It will all be set right. We live in that hope. And we live that hope by not only loving God, but loving our neighbors. That's wisdom. Foolishness is to choose to blow that off 
go your own way. And all I can say to that is, I hope you don't do that. If you must, good luck to you, because there's no hope there. So this parable of Jesus is a warning, an admonition, a word of encouragement, a word of direction. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the clarity of your teaching, the vivid imagery that once we hear it, we can never forget it. Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus into our lives to give us hope and faith and charity. Help us to live our lives like the five wise bridesmaids. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
there's any kids here that want to see, come on up. See in the back there, if you want to get closer, come on up. You can sit on the floor here, stand in the wings. Uh, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word of God, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for life in the world. As you bring your son to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. Live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God has made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your son grow in the Christian faith in life? We do. Sponsors. Up page three. Do you promise to nurture Ryan in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Yeah. To you all, congregation, people of God, do you promise to support Ryan and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. All right, parents, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all of the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to life in you. 
pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Father, we pray that you would sustain Ryan with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome Ryan into the family of God. Woo Anybody else? We have water. We have time. <laughs> Bag goes to them. Oh, the whole bag. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy companion, console. 
remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day that when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so of all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we pray in your name and join 
their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all of your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and of every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Desire to commune, come down the center aisle. I'll give you bread. We have wine and in individual cups, COVID and all that. And uh, these two ladies will help guide and direct. So, the body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ. 
Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Thank you. 